Hello and welcome to the 58th video in this series programming a chess engine in JavaScript. So the stage we're at now is that we have on the GUI the situation, if I just bring it up here you can see that I've already typed a few things or pressed a few piece clicks inside here. We're at the stage where we can try and make a move for the user. It detects the side to move we saw in the last video. Sorry, not the side to move. It detects whether we're clicking a piece or an empty square or not. Now what we need to do is we need to inside the make user move function actually build the functions to make the user move on the GUI. And the first function we need to build we're going to put in io.js and this is going to be the function that's going to actually detect the move made by the user. So I'm going to call this pass move and it's going to take a from and a to square as arguments and all this function is going to do is loop through all of the legal moves in the current position so we'll call generate moves and set up some variables. I'm going to copy and paste a little bit of code in here just to speed up the first little bit of this because it's code you've seen many times before and I'll just move this down so it's all visible as well. So we have our standard move loop here so looping through all the move list of all moves for the current position and then found will be set to bool.true if we find the move the user has made in our move list. The promotion piece is for dealing with promotions and a word on promotions at the moment the way the program works it simply promotes by default to queen. I haven't put anything in that promotes to any other kind of piece. Um, I'll probably change that sometime in the future but uh, not right now. So once we loop through our move we store each move in the, our var for a move and then we can start looking at whether the user made this move. And the way I've written this function, looking back at it now, isn't the most efficient way of writing it, but uh, it doesn't really matter. It's hardly uh, performance intensive. But we'll see if the from square from the move equals move and the to square from the move equals two, sorry. So if from square move equals from and to square move equals two, then we know that we've found our move. So we can say that found is equal to bool.true. However, there's one caveat with this, and that's if the move was a promoting move. So what we'll do is we'll say that if, well, in fact, no, we'll set prom piece first. We'll do it all on one line. We'll say prom piece equals a promoted from move, and we're going to say that if our prom piece is not equal to pieces dot empty, then we want to see if the move that we've seen in the loop here, because remember the from and two squares will be the same for four different moves in the case of a promotion promoting to the queen, rook, bishop and knight. Well, we want to find whether the move was a queen, a, actually a queen promotion in our move list here. So we'll say that if our prom piece from the move is equal to pieces dot white queen and the game board dot side is equal to colors dot white and then we want to say or and we're going to ask the question and I realize I've got the brackets slightly out of kilter here I'll just put one in here and it's not matched I know but now it is or the prompt piece of pieces black queen and colors and the side is black to move so essentially if it was a queen promotion then we know we found the correct promotion move. So we can also put the fat that found equals bull dot true here. Otherwise, if it doesn't, then we'll just continue. But if we have found it here, then we can break out of our loop already. So here we'll just continue and go to the next move because we haven't found the queen promotion, but we know we had a promotion because prom piece wasn't empty. Otherwise, it wasn't a promotion, which means we've definitely found the move on our move list that the user has tried to make. Now the case may be that, oh we can also break can't we now, now that we've found the move. The case may be though that the, use, the, the move the user has tried to make is illegal. Now I could have put the legality detection actually in here and only gone for found in the case of the move being legal. But I've done it a much more inefficient way and I'm going to say down the bottom here if found is not equal to bool dot false. So if the move is okay, then what we'll say is we'll say that if make move of move is equal to bool dot and you know this where this is going, I imagine because we've done it so many times in other functions. 
So if it's an illegal move, then we'll return no move. The, the move the user tried to make is illegal. Otherwise, it was an OK move, so we'll take that move back and then we can return that move. Otherwise, found was false, which means we'll just return no move. And like I said, looking back on this function now, it's been written just about as inefficiently as possible, but hey, it doesn't really matter. So that's our pass move function now written. So we need to go back into GOI.js and now we need to slot this into our make move. So just below the console output here of the user move, I'm going to make a var and I'm going to call this var passed and just say that's equal to oops pass move and then we'll take the user move dot from and do it the lazy way and the user move dot to like so and now what we can say is we can say that if passed is not equal to no move then we know we found a move we can make on the board and bear in mind that move will now have been made on the internal board uh, oh no, sorry it won't have been made on the internal board no it's been taken back here told a lie so the move hasn't been made so what we need to do is actually make the move on the internal board so we'll make move passed and what we'll do for now temporarily we'll just to the console actually call print board like so and save because what we also need to do but we haven't written them yet is write the functions to actually move the piece on the internal board so now what we'll have is once we've made one move the internal board situation won't be reflecting at the moment for now the GUI so if I just go here and wonder how many errors I've made if I just refresh the uh, console here and then let's just make E2 to E4 and you can see now that the internal board is printed and the board has indeed moved from E2 to E4. There were no typing errors. But of course, the board itself, the GUI, hasn't reflected this. So the situation is now different. And in fact, I wonder if I can now do E7, E6. Yes, I can. So you can see on the internal board that E7, E6 has now been played. It's detected it. But the pieces obviously aren't moving on the board here. So I can do Knight to C3. And so on the game's being played everything's running okay but nothing's happening on the GUI okay so that's it then for this video and in the next video we'll start setting up the functions to actually move the pieces then on the GUI itself so I hope that was all clear thanks very much for watching comments questions criticisms welcome as always on YouTube